Hello everyone, this is Shudipto from Technical Pod Podi and welcome to my new video. Today I'll be discussing about a recent feature from Postman which is currently in a beta stage and it's called Flow. So in today's video, I'll be implementing a couple of use cases using Flow from Postman and while configuring the Flow, I'll be using many building blocks from Postman Flow. I've already published another video where I've covered the basics of this new feature, the Postman Flow. So if you have not checked that video out, I'll highly recommend you to go through that first. The link you'll find in the description of this video as well as on the top right corner of the screen. Also, there is a dedicated blog covering the content of this video and you can find the link in the description of this video. Finally, before I start, I'd like to let you know if you have any feedback, please put it in the comment section and please subscribe to my channel to get a notification of all upcoming videos. So let's get started with our use case one. So this is my use case one. In this use case, I am trying to consolidate responses from multiple web services. So the steps are written. The number one step is I'm, I'll be calling an API. In the second step, I'll be calling the second API. In the third step, I'll be consolidating the responses from API call one and API call two. And in the fourth step, I'll be printing the result in the terminal. So this is a very basic use case. You can think in this way that let's say you have two API call and you want to consolidate the responses from both the APIs and pass it as an input to your third API call. So let's implement that in our Postman. So to implement this uh, use case, I am using this free API called Board API. Basically what this API is doing is basically recommends an activity based on the different type of categories. So here I have this API. So yeah. So if I run this, basically what it's telling is that based on different type, I am getting different type of activity recommended. For, so for example, for relaxation, take a caffeine app. Uh, if I run again for cooking, cook something together with someone. So now I am going to implement uh, the, our use case for uh, using this board API. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flow and start with a new flow. I'll click new and then I'll click this flow beta. Let's close that. So what I'll do first, I'll first start with a building block called send request. In the send request, I will be calling our board API and I'll be passing a variable that which type is equals to recreational. Perfect. So that's my first API call. That's my step number one. I'll be creating another API call, which is let's say my second request. Here I'll be calling again the board API. And this time I will be let's say type equals to let's say what are the different types here let's say type equals to cooking so in this second api call i want a recommendation for type cooking so i have two apis call so first api call then followed by the second api call now what i am trying to do I'm trying to consolidate the responses from the first API and the second API call. So let's do that. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another element called create data. Create data. In create data, a create data takes two input, the data one and data two. Let's say this is my data one and this is my data two. This is my data one and this is my data two. Actually, I don't need to connect this two. So let's cancel. So first, the response from the first request is coming here and response from the second request is coming here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list. The first element of the list will be data and then activity. And then in the second one, I want the response from the second request, which is data and then activity. So now I have consolidated the responses from the API call one and API call two. 
and let's do uh, let's print that in our terminal so now the response is going to our terminal so let's open our terminal clear that and let's start this flow for start to start the flow you just need to click on this start button at the bottom of the page so let's start that and then what is happening is that the first one show like take a class at your local community which is basically this one and then study a foreign language so i'm getting two responses i'm consolidating them in a list and then printing that to our to the terminal basically in in, in probably in a real world scenario you will not be printing in a terminal you'll probably pass that you know consolidated report to the third api call or something else but this is a way how you can consolidate the responses from two API call into uh, one data structure. So let's move to the next use case. Okay, so here is my use case number two. What I am trying to do here is that I'm trying to introduce a delay. So basically, you know, you have sometimes, you know, it it is, man, it's, it is required to delay the second API call or second action by some seconds right uh, how you can do that let's say uh, if we if we take an example of the previous one we are calling the api 1 and we are calling the api 2 there is no delay but let's say i want to i want to introduce a delay of 10 seconds between two kpi call i can also do that with the same postman flow so here are the steps i'll call the first api then i'll introduce a delay of 10 seconds after 10 seconds my api 2 will be called and finally, I'll be consolidating the results of API 1 and API 2 and finally print the result in the terminal. So let's see how I can introduce, how I can implement this using uh, Postman flow. So here I am in my previous example. So here basically what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to introduce a delay. I'm trying to introduce a delay between uh, send request 1 and send request 2. So what I can do is that from here, I can add a delay. So there is a block called delay and the delay block, let's say 10 seconds. And then from here to here. So basically what will happen when I click on start, this API will be called, the response will go to this one and this, but this block, the create data block will wait for a response coming from this block, but this block will not run because it is waiting for uh, this block to finish, which is basically a delay of 10 seconds. So once the 10 seconds is done, then this block will run past the value to this create data and it will consolidate the data and put it in the terminal. So let's see how it works. Let's clear our terminal and start. The, it started, but you can see here it's, there is a delay going on. So after 10 seconds, the it will go from here to here. It will, and this had happened and the response came here and that is how. Uh, it consolidates the data in a list va list variable and finally printing that in a terminal. So this is the way how you can introduce a delay in your um, in your use case if it is needed. So let's go to the next use case. So here is my next use case. So loop through the result. So sometimes you know when you call an API, you get response, and in the response body, you will basically get a list or an array. So you need to go, you need to loop through the array, find individual element, and then print the information that you need from that element. So that is what I'm going to do in this use case. I'll be calling an API, and then from that API, I'll get a response, I'll loop through the result. From the result, I'll create a variable and finally print the variable in the terminal. So let's implement that. So to implement this one, I'll be using another free API called CocktailDB. And what this basically is doing, if you give a, um, give a name, then it will try to find out what are the different cocktails that is possible uh, with that uh, with that drink, right? For example, if I give vodka, it will tell me what are the different you know drinks possible with vodka. So for that, let's close all of this and go to our collection and then open this cocktail one. And this is the API call. And if I send, what it is telling is that these are the different drinks. There are so many drinks that is possible with vodka. So it is telling like, you know, these are the different drinks that is possible with vodka. So use case is that I'll go, I'll loop through each of this string and print this now this name of the drink i don't want to print the thumbnail or the id i just want the name of the drink 
So what I can do is that I can go to a flow and start with a new flow. Again, clicking again, clicking on new will open this window and then click on flow. Close that. We always start with a send request. And our send request is cocktail, which is this one. Then the responses that I'll get, I'll go through each of these responses. So for each. But here in the for each, I will go through the body. This is my response I'm getting body and then drink. And these are the all the all the variables that I'm getting. So I'll go to this drinks. And then for each of this drink, I want to create a variable, create a data and data will be, it will be a record. No, it will not be a record. Sorry. Remove, it will be data and then drink. Finally, I want to print that in the terminal. Okay, so let's review that together. First, I'm creating a send request, looping through individual element, creating the data, which is basically from each of this array element, I'm just interested only on the drink name and finally printing the drink name in the terminal. So now let's open our terminal and let's start that. The moment we do that, if you can see here, we are getting so many, it's showing only the drink name. So this API will send you a good amount of drinks that is possible with vodka. So this API will keep on running. This for each loop is keep on running and going through each of the element and printing the printing the drinks that is possible with vodka. So this is the way how you can implement uh, looping uh, implement for each, which is needed to loop through a list of uh, elements. So let's see our next use case. So in our next use case, which is basically the last use case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to validate the result. So here, the, the, the thing that I'm trying to do, I'll be calling an API, I'll be calling another API, then I'll, then I'll compare the result between two APIs. And finally, I, if the validation success, success uh, passes, then I'll print the result in the terminal. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, for this one, I'll be calling two APIs from Open Meteor, which is basically an, uh, a live API, free API, which will give the uh, weather forecast for a country, for for a for a country or for a city. So let's say I want to get a, a New York weather. So this will tell me this is the New York weather. If I want to, uh, if you want to understand the Vancouver weather, this will tell me this is Vancouver weather. This is a New York weather. This is a Vancouver weather. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a calculation to find out if the New York wind speed is greater than Vancouver wind speed. So definitely New York wind speed is 13.2 and Vancouver wind speed is 8.3. So 13.2 is a greater than 8.3. So the validation will pass and finally it will print me the value, right? So let's implement this with a flow. Again, we'll start with a brand new flow. The first thing that we'll be doing will be calling the API. So send request. The first API will be the New York one. I'll be calling the New York. Then I'll be calling another API, uh, which is a Vancouver one. Uh, Vancouver. So I've called two APIs, this one and this one. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a check. So to do the check, I need two parameters. First, I need to get this response. And I need to get this response. So the, this response is going to the primary block. The Vancouver response is going to the secondary block. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to check if the primary current weather uh, wind speed is, uh, let's do this from here, yeah, wind speed 
Uh, let's try it again. Primary. Uh, okay, I need to start with this one, which is primary bracket, primary current with a um, wind speed, and then close this bracket is greater than primary one is basically new york one so if new york weather wind speed is greater than secondary which is a vancouver current weather and then wind speed and then close this one we don't need to do any more calculation and then if this is successful i'm going to pass that information to our terminal so that it can be displayed okay so that's good let's open our terminal nothing is there so let's start that awesome so it's printing the uh, wind speed of new york because new york wind speed is greater than um, uh, vancouver right if we change this and let's make it a uh, less than what will happen if we do that the flow execution finishes but nothing is printing the reason is that if i open this one this check what is doing is basically doing if you see the information there is two input one is primary and the secondary if the primary and secondary whatever logic you will put if the logic passes then output will be the primary one so here in the, in the last uh, example we put new york is less than equals to vancouver which is not true that is why nothing is getting passed to terminal and that's why our terminal is blank the moment i make this as greater than it becomes true with true the primary information will be passed to terminal which is a new york data and you are getting the new york data so this is a way how you can do a check and compare the result of multiple uh, result of two uh, apis and then take decisions accordingly okay with that we have come to an end i think this new feature from postman is beneficial for implementing multiple use cases in more drag and dra drag and drop approach uh, this feature is in beta but the postman team is continuously working on it so i'd like to i'd love to hear about your flow creations and any bugs that you have run into while working with the postman flow so please put your use case and ideas in the comment section i'm really interested to know multiple use cases Finally, I hope this video is helpful and please hit the like icon and share and also please subscribe to my channel to get updates about all my upcoming videos. Till then, stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye.